In this video, we will talk about inner products, lengths, and orthogonality. So we define the inner product of two vectors, v times w, as the matrix multiplication v transpose times w. Now, the v and the w have to be column vectors of the same size. So when you do this, you get v1 times w1 plus v2 times w2 plus v3 times w3. Another name for the inner product is the dot product. Technically, an inner product is a little bit more general, but in this class, the inner product and the dot product are the same exact thing. So here are some properties of the inner product or the dot product. So it really is like multiplication of vectors, except that when you multiply two vectors, then you get a number. There might be another multiplication uh, between a vector and a vector, and you get a vector out of it, but that we will save for another time. So one of the key properties of the inner product is the inner product of the vector with itself. So we'll use the notation, this absolute value looking thing, but with two bars. This is called the norm or length of the vector. And if v, if v is some vector like this, then the length squared of v is just v1 squared plus v2 squared plus all the way to vn squared. So here's an example that might pop up. If we want to find what's called the unit vector parallel to v, well, what we want to find is a vector that's going in the direction of v, but it is of unit length. So we want the magnitude or the length to be one. But that's pretty easy to do. Just divide the vector v by its length. Then if you take the length of the whole thing, then you get magnitude of v divided by the magnitude of v, which is one. So in this case, the length of v is root 5, so a unit vector going in the direction of v is given by 1 over root 5 and 2 over root 5. Now suppose we have two vectors u and v, then this pink vector is given by the vector u minus v, because if you go u and then minus v, you end up here. This is this vector, translated over here. So in terms of their lengths, it's a triangle with length u, length v, and length u minus v. Now recall law of cosines. The law of cosines is the three sides of this triangle and the angle between these two has the relation. c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. So in terms of these vector lengths, if we rewrite the law of cosines, this will be u minus v squared equals u squared plus v squared minus 2uv cosine theta. But remember that we can rewrite u minus v square in terms of the dot product. And then because the dot product is a multiplication which had the distributive property, we can multiply this out. Here we use the fact that u dot v is equal to v dot u. So the u squareds cancel, the v squareds cancel, the twos cancel. And so now we can rewrite u dot v as the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cosine theta. So the dot product is telling us something about the angle between these two vectors. And for, for theta equals 90 degrees, well, cosine of 90 degrees is zero, but that tells you that u dot v is zero. So when the dot product of two vectors is zero, that means they are perpendicular or orthogonal. Now let's discuss a little bit about orthogonal complements. An orthogonal complement of a subspace V are all the vectors W such that V dot W equals zero for all V and V. So geometrically, if you have some subspace V, then it would be a collection of vectors W that are perpendicular to the entire space V. And an interesting theorem concerning orthogonal complements is the following. Given a matrix A, the row space of A is the vector space spanned by the rows of A, and the orthogonal complement of the row space is the null space of A, and the orthogonal complement of the column space is the null space of A transpose. So let's discuss why this is true. So let's let V be an element in the null space of A, then by definition A times V is equal to zero, but we can rewrite this in terms of the rows and columns of A and V. But when we do matrix multiplication, what are we actually doing? We're just taking the dot product of this row to this column, but those dot products are all zero. And the row space 
of A is the vector space spanned by these vectors. And so if their dot product is always zero, then any com linear combination of those will also be zero. And so therefore V is in the orthogonal complement of the row space. To try something like this to prove the other statement that the orthogonal complement of A is equal to the null space of A transpose.